So, this is now getting some buzz. Christian Wilkins got cut for the Miami Dolphins. And the Bengals defensive line coach, Marion Hobby, coached Kristen Wilkins at... Kristen Wilkins at both Clemson and the Dolphins. Wilkins to Cincy. Now, listen, okay? I'll say this again and again and again. Probably a million bazillion times. Every single free agent possible is a yes, depending on their price tag. And there's really no difference here with Christian Wilkins. The price tag is correct. I 100% would love to have him on the squad. He's a great defensive lineman. He's really not that old. He's 6'4", 310 pounds. According to Pro Football Focus, he does have a 74.9 overall grade, a 71.5 run defense grade, 72.8 um, pass rush grade. Run defense snaps, he's played 331, and then last year he played 563 pass rush snaps. Which again, like I said, overall wise, the guy's an animal. The guy's an absolute animal. My only problem is how much would he cost and what other teams are going to be interested in him, right? <sighs> okay. He plays left defensive tackle, which, again, really spells more and more narratives of us not bringing back DJ Reader. Now, if we bring back DJ Reader, I feel like we're not going to be as proactive in free agency or potentially the draft for the D-tackle position just because of the fact it's like, well, yes, we could go ahead and go out there and spend big boy money. If we have Reader, then B.J. Hill, we're probably not looking more toward a D-tackle than just a veteran or bring someone in to see what they could do or potentially draft someone, right? I feel like we would rather spend our money, especially the limited money we're going to have after Chase's contract and T. Higgins' contract. We would rather use that one at tight end or potential linemen um, in free agency and then worry about the other stuff in the draft. So if we don't bring back DJ Reader, which right now the speculation is we will because... Um, Coach Taylor did say that we were still talking to him. Duke Tobin did go ahead and elaborate that, you know, there is conversations back and forth. So, clearly, we have interest in bringing him back in some capacity, depending on how much he wants. Yeah, so again, like I said, this all really goes down to the fact of us not bringing back DJ Reader. And if we don't bring back DJ Reader, then I have no problem at all going Christian Watkins, Wilkins here. I think he could be a great fill-in play. He could be a great, maybe not 100% a substitute for um, DJ Reader, just because DJ Reader is that good. He's that amazing of a defensive tackle. But it would be a nice free agent replacement, right? And depending on the price tag, it could work out very, very well. But again, like I said, it does come down to the price tag. Um, now, when you have a guy like this, Christian Watkins, or Wilkins, I keep saying Watkins, Christian Wilkins, he's not that old. And that definitely goes into some of the money that he will get paid. Um, right now, he is currently sitting at, what is that, three, five years in the league. 28, he's 28 years old right now. So, I'm going to guess he's going to command around 15 to 16 million a year. The thing about the Dolphins is they actually had to cut a lot of players recently. They had to cut one of their cornerbacks. They had to cut Christian Wilkins. And the reason why is because Tua's contract's up. And they're going to have to pay him big boy money. And with his contract being up, they're going to have to sacrifice some of these assets they have um, to go ahead and pay him. And that's why we see players like Christian Wilkins hitting the free agents market. And also, I believe, who was their corner that they cut? Was it Jones? I want to say it was someone Jones. I might be incorrect there. But again, like I said, it's just a part of football, you know. When you got to pay your quarterback, you're going to lose some assets. So again, like I said, for the correct price tag, I'm going to say yes for Wilkins. Um, but again, like I said, it comes down to the correct price tag. He's still going to be a monster or beast anywhere he goes. I'm expecting him to be just as good as anyone else in free agency, especially for the D-tackle position. Because when you're looking over the D-tackle position in free agency, and I'm just going to go ahead and pull this up real fast. 
there is not as many crazy great notable names this year. There are some, like Javon Kinlaw, who's really decent. Um, but if we go available, let's go to the D-tackle position. You got Chris Jones, who said already said he will he wants to be back with the uh, Chiefs, so that's not going to change. Um, you also got DJ Reader, which, again, if we don't bring him back, then he will be free agent. Uh, Grover Stewart, Fletcher Cox, Sheldon Rankins, Austin Johnson, Daquan Jones, and then so on and so on. And again, like I said, Javon Kinlaw is also there. And all these guys are really solid plays. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say any of these guys are not good players. So all good players. My point is, though, when you go down this list here, you're not seeing any, like, game-breaking players, I'll say. And Wilkins is in with salary $20.2 million. Yeah, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money to have to spend on one player. Especially when you're going to pay Chase all the money you're going to pay him. And you're going to pay uh, T. Higgins all the money you're going to pay him. This is more our speed per year wise. But again, like I said, this is why I so badly want to bring back DJ Reader. Because I don't want to see that type of ballpark. Or we'll have to go out there and hopefully find a guy who can fix our problems. But right now, DJ Reader is sitting at a $14.9 million average annual salary. Uh, three years, $44.75 million would be the contract that he would probably get. Which, I'm sure they're trying to figure this out as close to this number as possible. Because I feel like Cincinnati would want to pay him this much. This is not that much to pay him. Especially for how good of a player he is. I'm going to guess, though, that he's going to want more than this. Prob he's probably going to want in the ballpark range of that $20 million. We're just going to have to figure out a way to get him kind of down a little bit off that number. And see if we can kind of get closer as, you know, the next, what, literally week. <laughs> week goes by. I mean, man, free agency is literally right around the corner. This is the craziest time because... It's like, bam, free agency right there. Got to get things figured out. Got to get some of these players to, you know, get under contract or else it's over. You know, they're going to be a free agents. And when we look at the free agents we have right now, let's go to cap calculator. Don't want to do that. Let me go to this. Tyler Boyd. Yeah, he's going to be going. It looks like Jonah Williams. I mean, we haven't heard anything about any of these guys other than DJ Reader. Working out contracts with us. Now, most of these guys, like Trenton Irwin, he'll come back for a cheap contract. Melcher Wilcox, he'll probably be going. Tanner Hudson comes back. Um, and then, you know, go up the list here. Like Cody Ford, he'll probably be back on a cheap contract. Uh, Drew Sample, etc. But the ones that we actually care about, slash actually mean something if we lose. Sorry. <clears throat> Not at all. Um... Yeah, you haven't heard anything about these guys even potentially resigning because I don't think Cincinnati's even reaching out to them. Not Max Sharpinger, but um, other than DJ Reader, these other three, Tyler Boyd, Jonah, and Cheeto, no one's even talking about because I don't think we even care about bringing them back. DJ Reader is the only player we really care about bringing back. And a lot of it, again, comes down to the fact of how much we're spending on, you know, Chase and Higgins. So... We'll have to wait and see what ends up happening, but for the correct price tag, I'd say 100% yes. See you guys in the next one. Peace.